Hi, everyone, and welcome to another series of Foundry virtual events. My name is Joyce, your marketing host for today. I'm here today with my colleague, Juan Salazar, Senior Creative Product Manager here at Foundry, and of course, our special guest for today, Pedro Andrade, 2D Supervisor. Super excited to, uh, that you're here on board with us today. And we've got some really exciting things that we're going to be talking about. So I'll just run through my things very quickly, and then we'll dive straight into Pedro's session. Thank you. All right. Thank you. We've got over 41 webinars, on-demand webinars available now. So for more information, um, please visit our foundry.com forward slash events page. Um, for any questions, any feedback, or you want to participate in Foundry virtual events next year, please send us an email on virtual.events at foundry.com. We are getting to the end of the year, but we have a few more listings available. So we've got introducing smart vector tools in NUKEX on November the 24th. And then we've got an introduction to practical compositing with Austin Mayers on December the 1st. So make sure you tune in for those. On our Foundry Learns page, uh, we host a lot of documentation, uh, release notes, dev docs, and some new training materials as well. Um, for more information, please visit our learn.foundry.com's page. And also, uh, make sure you follow us on our social media channels as well. Um, our Insights Hub is a section where we host um, a lot of our case studies, a lot of articles, a lot of artist spotlights as well, and some industry trends. So for more information on that, visit our Insights page or our social media channels where we actually highlight some of the industry trends as well. So speaking of learning, uh, we've recently just done a collaboration with uh, VFX artist uh, Austin Mayer. So he's also going to be doing a, a webinar uh, with us in December as well. Um, he's actually put together um, some new tutorial uh, videos. So some of the fundamentals of compositing, which are very, very key. So um, for more information on those, or if you want to download those videos as well, um, you can go visit our learn.foundry.com page. So more learning for the community. <laughs> so we've got some more learning materials um, by Josh Parks. Um, Josh Parks is a senior um, compositor at Important Looking Pirates. Um, he does new tutorials. He does one-to-one -one trainings and coaching as well. Um, for more information on that and how you can book those, or if you just want to have a look and what he has available, um, you can check out his page on compositingpro.com. And then calling out to all students out here, if you're listening in, um, we are doing a first year free student licenses. So this gives you an opportunity to explore all of our Foundry Creative software through the first year free program that we have. And this is an opportunity for you and uh, for students, of course, to experiment with Foundry products for one year free of charge as well. So that would be for Nuke Studio, Mari, Katana, and Moto. So for more information, you can check our educations page as well on foundry.com. Lastly, I just want to take the opportunity to say thank you to all of the studios, uh, freelancers, artists, speakers who have so far participated with us at Foundry Virtual Events this year. Thank you so much for sharing your stories. Thank you for so much for building your stories um, for us as well, and for sharing it with the wider audience um, around the world. And we're looking so we're looking forward to building up this slide and many more stories in the coming years. So thank you so much for your support if you are listening. In. And that's it for me. Thank you again for joining in. So we're going to dive straight into Pedro's session on Complayer and the Next Level program.
fantastic. Thank you so much for that. Um, Pedro, I'm going to hand over to you, but just very quickly before we drive start your session, um, I just wanted to let you know, dear audience, if you have any questions, please uh, put it into your questions tab. Um, otherwise, enjoy the webinar. All yours. Thank you, Pedro. Thank you, Joyce. Thank you. So, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm the slide is um, will be on. It's being on at the moment. Yeah, but uh, here we are finally. Thank you, everyone. Uh, some of you know me from the Complayer podcast, which was an adventure that I started uh, almost, I believe, almost uh, half a year ago. Which is crazy to think about that. Uh, but finally, we've been um, we reached this day, uh, which was something that I've been teasing for over a month now uh you know uh, what what is all about you, you've seen the trailer but today we are here with foundry and uh, i would like to um, start thanking foundry for all the support from the very beginning of the show even um uh, we were i'm may, maybe in the second session or third session and um, foundry reached out to me saying you know congratulating the show and uh, offering their support so thank you uh foundry for all the support until now we reached this day finally uh, and uh, also um, would like to um, thank all the viewers of the, the show your support has been amazing and none of this will be possible without your support so thank you uh, very much for all your um, you know um, support in many different ways messages suggestions uh, all of that it's been really really great so Finally, we are here today as I said and uh, let's dive in into what this is uh, going to be about uh, I think I have control. Yes, I do. So um, today, what we're going to talk about uh, is a little bit about myself. For those of you that don't know me, uh, we're going to talk about the supervisors' uh, pillars, the ones that I believe are most important, and the ones that I chose to, um, you know, build the program in the way that I just did. We're going to talk about what the program is and what it's not. Very important thing to uh, talk about to avoid any uh, misconceptions or confusions. Uh, we're going to talk about where it's going to live, uh, how it's going to work, and then we're going to dive uh, for the first time into the units and how the units are scheduled uh, within the weeks. And finally, obviously, how to be part of it. And uh, I'll try my best. I promise Joyce and everyone at the team that I'll try my best to. Um, you know, to respect the time that uh, that I want, which should be about 20, 30 minutes. Uh, so I, I, I will go deep, uh, as deep as I can in, in all of these uh, topics. Uh, but most importantly is for you to also have the chance to ask some questions at the end. And we're going to do that definitely. OK, so what this is uh, to start with is, as I just uh, saw on the trailer, is a unique educational program uh, specifically tailored for aspiring compositing supervisors. Uh, it's something that has been in my mind for, uh, I would say, a couple of years or more. But uh, since we live in this pandemic, this is actually the time that uh, I had to fully dedicate um, to such a thorough program as you as you will see uh, finally um, yeah I, I had the chance to do that and this is uh, exactly what we're going to talk about now and today so a little bit about myself uh, for those of you who've been watching the show you know um, uh, a bit about me but for those of you who are just uh, uh, seeing this for the first time I'm a composing supervisor uh, did my career uh, in London with a few legs here and there around the world as well but mostly in London London is pretty much my home um, and uh, although I'm Portuguese so weather wise very different <laughs> but in any case it's um, yeah it's pretty much uh, home in London for sure and um, a few months ago uh, as I said around six months ago I started this complair uh, project uh, that it's a YouTube channel in which in in the midst of the the pandemic I thought okay you know I've never done anything like very specific to the community and this is I think the time to support those that um, probably lost their jobs or they would like to know a little bit more uh, about the craft in a different way and I always try to do things in a different way but um, yeah, that's basically what the program is all about with, with a few segments um, uh, here and there. So I invite you, for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about um, regarding the show, go to YouTube and search for Complayer. I'm sure you'll find it very quickly. So in terms of uh, 2D supervision career, uh, again, in London, I did my, uh, all, all, all my career pretty much in London uh, with a few exceptions here and there. And as a 2D supervisor, I worked in different companies such as Milk, Cinecite, and DNAG. 
And um, this is actually a good point to start to say that because all of these companies um, are very different between them, like in size and in the way in ways that they approach uh, a project sometimes due to also you know the size of the teams that they have and all that stuff this was actually when i started when i realized that uh, and you know this is over the years of course uh, that i started to you know thinking about the program like this because all of them work towards the same goal but they have different approaches to it and i noticed that uh, there's a common commonalities between all of them and that's exactly how I designed the program. So uh, let's take a look about uh, a little bit about compositing supervision and what are the pillars that I'm talking about. Because again, as I said, there is a commonality between all of these uh, different ways of going about uh, you know, the, this type of role. So I want to highlight these three topics, which is how I designed the program. Uh, so the program is, is designed based on uh, a pillar about technique, another one about scripting, and another one, another one about management. And um, th these are the commonality about all of these different uh, companies that I that I have experienced with. And also, uh, I also have, um, for those of you that know the show, uh, you, you probably know about this, but I have a past career as an engineer. And uh, so all of these uh, things uh, about my life, and also I did a little bit of time as a music producer as well, which all of these things, they, they seem like they don't have anything to do with each other, but they always, all of them contribute for what I uh, am as a supervisor as well. And all of you will also have your own experiences and, and I think you should embrace that. I think we had an issue with Pedro, but I think it's fine. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <No. laughs> <laughs> wow, what happened? Uh, sometimes I have this problem in my channel, but I wasn't expecting it on this one. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. We're back. <laughs> We're back. I don't know. I don't know until when you guys um, catch what I was saying. But um, I was saying that I have a past career in different um, in different fields as a mechanical engineer. I worked uh, trained and worked as a mechanical engineer, and uh, I worked also as a mechanical engineer in, in several different places, including you know uh, Africa, for example, and um, and visual effects. In fact happen almost out of an accident, as um, as I also mentioned before. So um, because of all those experiences, I was saying that, uh, you know, all these three pillars, this is exactly what I am as a person because of all those uh, combined experiences. And from my experience in VFX, I, I uh, noticed that these three pillars are actually the ones that are common to every supervisor that I've ever met. So on the technique side of things, of course, a, a composite supervisor is always someone that is there to solve problems, especially in composite because we are at the end of the assembly line, let's call it like this. And uh, a lot of times uh, we are expected, every time actually, uh, expected to come up with solutions for um, you know uh, a number of problems, whether it's solutions within our team, within composite team, or also helping the project in a more broad way uh, within other departments to solve the common goal, which is we need to solve the shot, we need to solve the show. So this, the technique uh, pillar is very important for you to come up with solutions that will make you more proactive in finding you know, different ways of thinking about the problem and also will make you a, a better team player because not only you are you know, uh, being the head of your team, but also being a team player within you know, a more broad spe spectrum uh, uh, in, in talking and, and finding solutions with other departments as well. So a lot of all of that stuff has to do with troubleshooting and troubleshooting without technique is not possible and the same goes the other way around, of course. So that's the first pillar on the technique. On the scripting part, uh, it's, I believe, very important. And again, although I'm saying that this is a commonality on all of the supervisors, but uh, of course, each different supervisor will go more towards one of the pillars or more towards another one. And you don't have necessarily speaking to have uh, like a lot of uh, depth on, in scripting to become a composing supervisor. Although the world today is not the same as 10 years ago, 20 years ago, there's much more people involved. And if you want to stand out, knowing scripting is definitely a great way to do that. But f not only because of that, but also because you will think about systems and you will you know, empower your systems in a much, much better way uh, because, of course, you want to work smarter and not harder. Uh, so scripting allows you to do that, definitely. So you will think and empower your systems, as I just mentioned. You will have, uh, uh, with, with some knowledge of scripting, you have the ability of doing some pipeline. You will increase your logical thinking uh, in a lot of, lot of uh, situations. Uh, again, might be related with exactly what you're doing in compositing, but overall as a company. 
Um, and what this will give you also, and I'm talking for, from a personal experience point of view, is it will open some doors for you in terms of like, you know, um, new ideas, new possibilities, and all that, that all of that stuff. But that what what that also will give you is you will see other doors locked that you didn't even know that existed. So this will motivate your constant research about you know better things, different things, and things that you already know. But with the power of scripting, you will even develop them further. And then lately, we're going to talk about management because um, you know you can have the best technique in the world. You can have like very good scripting. Um, you know, uh, systems and all that stuff you have, you can have all of that knowledge. But if you can't manage a project, uh, I mean, it's impossible to talk about supervision without talking about management. That's basically what I'm saying. So there's a few things regarding management that um, it's important for a composing supervisor to know. Starting, of course, with project management. Um, I have other experiences, as I said, as an engineer, uh, in which I also dealt with management in different uh, situations as well and uh, of course that contributed also to my own style and that's exactly what i want you uh, guys to to also develop it's your own style so project management is definitely something that you have to know um, and we have to know that we're going to talk about this in just a while but you have to know this in a more uh, generic way not, not necessarily speaking only about this tool we have great tools in vfx like f-track and, and and shotgun and others but you know it's great that you know how to use them but we have to talk about and we have, you have to think about this in a in a more broad spec spectrum these are just tools but you have to know uh, you know things from a more uh, broad perspective and then other types of management like color management very important whether you like this theme or not uh, let me tell you that you have to deal to deal with it so important to know things about this and then obviously quality control so these are the three pillars that uh, you'll have to to know in my view in my own experience uh, to become a, a compositing supervisor in in which you know you have all the knowledge that that you need as a starting point but this will not be the beginning well this might be the beginning but it's not definitely the end of your story as a compositing supervisor this is like a constant you know search uh, and development and then yes we are we are in the different um slide here yeah uh, and then the, the other one the other pillar uh, that i can call like a, an extra pillar is how you have all of this knowledge and make it your own style because that's very important i have my own style because i had my own personal experiences professional experiences but you also have your own style and this, this is exactly what this program will promote it's not only all this knowledge but also how to make this knowledge your style your own style i mean it's it, the intention is not for you to become like me or to become like your colleague or to become of like one of your supervisors if they're good examples great take them on board if they're bad examples okay you know what to avoid but you have to definitely make all of this your own style your own voice and so we're going to talk also about soft skills you know things this, these are just examples things like persuasion verbal communication flexibility adaptability conflict management i mean all of those things are things that you have to know because you have to put the human side of things into all of those uh, three pillars and that's exactly what these soft skills will be about okay so what the program is and what it's not very important to distinguish this so this is, as, as I just mentioned in the beginning, and you've seen the trailer, is a program tailored for aspiring compositing supervisors. So at this stage in your career, if you feel free, if you feel um, ready to move on to that role, you have to, first of all, as, as I just said, to feel ready, okay? Because being a compositing supervisor is it's a different thing than being an artist, okay? You have to be, of course, a very good artist, but mainly what you're gonna do is things differently. You have to think about things differently. So this program is not for you to create better imagery because I'm assuming that at this stage in your careers, you already know how to do that. You have your great showreel. So this will not be also a showreel material kind of a thing. I'm the, I'm, I'm the, the, the examples that I show is very generic examples. So it's not one of those types uh, of, of, uh, of uh, programs. It's, it's a program based on how to uh, see things from a leadership point of view okay so if you've been watching the show you know that the segment called that i called uh, tech corner um that people tend to um you know i'm very fortunate because people are saying great things about it and and it, that will be basically in that kind of style so it will be about topics that you know but i'm showing you different angles so you will have all of these uh, extra tools 
for you know in any kind of situation if you face a certain problem you apply all of those different ways of thinking about or go about the problem so this will promote uh, in all in all this will promote more research more testing and more questioning and uh, it's designed exactly to be in that way because that's exactly the way that i learned what i what i know it's not you know saying you have to do this in this way just because i'm saying you uh, that it's the way no that's not that's not what what the intention is the intention is to show a different angle and then you go about ah oh, okay i never thought about this problem this way so let me do some more research so i i come up with my own style of doing things and with that you promote again your individual uniqueness and style and that's very important for me and it should be also important for you as well so uh, school versus course it's something that um i think it's very very important to have like the school set of uh, set of mind when you're uh, enrolling this program because uh the school um it's more about like having the sense that you are in a in a space it's not a physical space uh, it's a virtual space but you'll have your colleagues you have your um you know forums that we we're going to talk about uh, uh, about that in just a second and i'll be there always so it's not something that uh you know you have a course you do this in on your own and never heard uh, or hear about me again no it's exactly the opposite as we're going to see so that's the difference between school state of mind or course state of mind so again uh, going uh, from what it is and what it's not so the level that this is aimed for is for establishing composing the professionals that feel ready to go to the next step okay we're talking about more than 170 lessons uh you know the the composed form for the different kind of uh, chapters that we're going to see and there will be limited enrollments in same thing as you have in school okay uh, you know you have a limited uh, amount of people that can enroll on a certain subject and that's exactly what what's going to happen in here it's going to be an online streaming uh you can learn at your own pace and every week there will be a uh, new chapters that will be unblocked automatically receive an email about that we're going to take a look at that in just one second as well and uh, there will be a weekly call with me always with the students and um, we will talk about uh, exactly the content that was unblocked on that same week uh, and uh, apart from that there will be a private forum 24 7 uh, that i'll i will be there as well but you'll be and i encourage you to interact with your fellow colleagues as well this will also be mobile mobile friendly it will be in english and you'll have an unlimited uh, access time uh, within the, the the portal so speaking of portal this is exactly what uh, what this is this is a, a screen grab an actual screen grab about the how the thing will look like uh, on the uh, webinar after this one that, that I'm talking about, we will actually run more deeply about uh, the look and feel about uh, all of this. But this is actually a, a screen grab about how these things will, will look like. And so this will be a portal through the Complayer's website, uh, complayervfx.com. Uh, Complayer so through there, you'll be able to access the, uh, the program uh, and you'll be uh, able to register and log in with your own name. I'll be able to interact directly with you or with the entire class in which you'll be part of anyway. And uh, so 12 units, that's uh, how the, the program is designed. So uh, the way that's going to work is going to be 12 plus one unit. And this plus one is because there will be one that is going to be fully live. And we're going to talk about that in just one second. Uh, as I mentioned before, it's going to be more than 170 lessons. Uh, there will be a mix between pre-recorded and live sessions, always, always, okay? So the reason why it's important to have the pre-recorded session is because you can be on the other side of the world and, you, you know, you do it at your own pace. Uh, that's fine. As long as, you know, you'll be able to interact uh, with the rest of the class in, in one of these two forms that I just mentioned, that's exactly what I want. And uh, so in it, you're going to be able to also to, um, to know and to, to check your progress, uh, how you're doing in this, in this example here, we see 0%, but you can, of course, you'll see this changing depending on where you are with the program. And um, new content will be auto unlocked weekly. As I alluded before, as soon as you start the program, uh, the first chapter will be unlocked. Uh, of course, you'll be ready, uh, immediately ready to start. And then the other ones will be locked every week one or more chapters will be unlocked and we're going to talk about that and we'll see that in just one second but this is how, uh, how it's going to be so you can although it's unlocked that doesn't mean that you need to start straight away you start whenever you think it's you're ready uh you can go back on the ones that are unblocked already uh, go back and forth it's up to you 
but uh, I advise you to follow uh, the program as soon as it's unblocked because the group call will be about the chapter that was unblocked. So I think it's a good thing that you start, but uh, start at that uh, same time, but it's up to the student. Uh, apart from that, there will be a 24 seven forum available. And I'm very happy to uh, finally share uh, my tools, uh, which a lot of people during all these years, and also because of the Complair podcast, I've been asking my tools. Uh, for those of you that watch the show, you know that I don't share my tools publicly, and those of you that worked with me before know that I have a lot of things that I did over the years. So I share all my tools with people that I uh, that I work with, and in this capacity, I'm facing exactly that we're working together, so you'll have access to the tools, either at the end of the program as like a bundle, let's call it like this, or throughout the, the duration of the, the the program, depending on the type of lesson, I might be make you know a specific tool available or a specific setup available, so you can follow and try a few things here and there. Let me just tell you about these things uh, because it's a thing that I also uh, have been saying in the uh, Complair podcast, which is the reason why um, I'm, I'm giving you now the tools, the availability, availability to the tools, is for you to know or to understand a different way of doing things. But beforehand, in the great, great majority of the times, I always deconstruct them while we're in class. So you'll know how to do them by yourself. And the, even though I'm say, I'm giving you mine, you'll be able to construct yours, and I encourage you to construct construct yours anyway. So in terms of the units, this, these are all the units that we're talking about. So 12 plus 1, so we're talking about 13 units. And now we're going to talk about how this will be uh, spread out um, in time. So we're going to talk, uh, first week is going to be only about 2D space. And this will be basically alternative techniques about topics that you already know. Okay, what this will give you is, you know, enhanced technique for you to come up with simple solutions for some things that probably you wouldn't think about the 2D space to achieve them. So that's exactly what's going to happen on the 2D space on the first week. On the second week, we're going to have exactly the same thing about 3D space. And um, this, some of you might be slightly confused about these things because, of course, what we do is always between 2D and 3D space, obviously. But these are generic concepts or in other hand, in some cases, very specific ones that use the, uh, the, the 3D, either the 3D space only or the 3D space only for problem um, solving. Uh, as soon as, as you have like a problem, you know, okay, I know that uh, in this way I can do it in a very simplistic way to achieve and to solve my problem. So week three, we're gonna have three um, uh, topics available. It's not gonna be one, it's gonna be three. And uh, we're talking about ST maps, smart vectors, and UV painting specifically. And the reason why we have these three combined is because all of them are related with each other. So we're going to talk about uh, some things that, uh, or topics again, that you probably know. Uh, what I'm showing you here is different angles on how to go about them in all of them. Then week four, we're going to have uh, two um, topics, which uh, will be about keying and CG compositing. Keying, of course, is something that uh, <laughs> We all have our own way of doing things. Uh, I don't want to, this is not about saying you should do this my way, not, not, not the case. Uh, it will never be about that, uh, by the way, as I just mentioned. I want you to find your own way. But uh, this will be my way of thinking about things that, from my experience, um, work. Okay, so I want you to question what you know and maybe take some insights from, 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 from this way of working. On the CG compositing side of things, I'm going to focus more on the interact, on how to interact uh, in a, as flawless as possible way between the shaders part and the light groups part, and how you can interact with them and promote your teams, again, systems to come up with fast solutions in a way that everybody of any level in your team can work and understand. On week five, it's going to be a topic that a lot of people have been asking me uh, since the beginning of the, the Complair podcast, which is uh, linear algebra. So linear algebra, uh, as, I, as I said in the beginning, it's something that I have some background on. Uh, I was not particularly good at it, let me tell you, at that time when I was an engineer or when I was training to be an engineer. And it was only when I was in VFX that I thought, okay, wait a minute, but there's some things in here that I have some knowledge about. So I have to go back and recap on all of those things and learn new things because some of these things I didn't learn um, because you know linear algebra is a very wide topic. And uh, so here we're going to talk about linear algebra in a very uh, different way. So in school we talk about maths in a very you know generic way without being uh, without 
applying that uh, type of knowledge to anything specific. In here, I'm going to do exactly the opposite. I'm going to go through all of those uh, topics about linear algebra, but always applying them in Nook. So Nook will be always on our side, and you'll see that your mind with this type of knowledge will expand. I mean, I still remember the day when, when this happened to me, so it will happen, I'm sure, with you as well. And this will be actually a very uh, good foundation for you to understand this next week, which will be about position pass and normal pass specifically. Uh, you can go about these topics without knowing linear algebra, obviously, we've all been there. But not only are we going to talk about specifically, I would say more even on, on the position pass uh, topic, I still remember, honestly, the day in which I went more about more seriously about this this topic, and a lot of doors opened in my mind because of this topic alone, position pass, and with the inclusion of the knowledge that by now you should have about the linear algebra, you will have the foundations on how to understand why this works in this way, and possibly have other ideas for some things that I'm not even covering here. And that's exactly what the whole program is all about: for you to to have like, okay, here's a different angle. And now I, I know how to search for other things. That's exactly what the program is aimed for. So week seven is going to be about particles and deep compositing, uh, two chapters again in this week. So particles, depending on the type of um, companies and type of medium, mediums that you've been working with uh, either lately or throughout your entire life uh, or career, it's something that you either have some knowledge of, you don't have any knowledge of, or you have some, but you'd like to have more. So what we're going to have in here is to recap on all of those things and at the same time, giving you like very specific techniques for specific, very specific things on how to use particles for that. In some cases, probably you never even thought about particles to achieve some of these things that I'm going to show you in here. And on the deep compositing side, we're going to talk about very specific techniques for you to, to have more control on your comps using the deep uh, workflow. Week eight. It's going to be about all about color science and um, you know whether as I said in the beginning whether I like this topic or not uh, I have to tell you that you'll have to deal with it okay as a compositing supervisor so more on the management side of things as I also mentioned but you cannot manage really something and knowing, knowing exactly what you're doing if you don't know what you're managing so color science chapter is going to be about like going a bit more deeply about all these concepts and probably fill some holes of knowledge or confusion there, because this is a topic that can be fairly confusing and uh, there's a lot of misconceptions about this topic. A lot of people had a, have a lot of doubts. Uh, I, I'm not saying that I'm a color scientist. I'm not, okay? There's like specific people to deal with that, on that uh, at that level, but there's definitely something that you as a compositing supervisor should know, and we're gonna cover all of that stuff in here, including ACES as well, okay? From a, a more deep uh, uh, point of view. Then week nine, we're going to enter in the realm of scripting and we're going to start with TCL. So we know that, uh, you know, different people will have different type of knowledge about uh, all of these things that I've been uh, talking in here. And TCL is also one of them. We know that TCL is the, 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 the language that Nuke uses for expressions and all of that stuff. So the, whether you have like a lot of experience and know exactly how to deal with all the ins and outs about the TCL type of language, we will cover not only that, but we'll cover probably some other ways on how to go about and use the TCL to enhance your systems once again and to promote your, um, you know, uh, team's workflow for, you know, uh, saving time and stuff like that. And then on the next week, week 10, it's going to be the same thing, but only about Python. So Python, um, you know, it's a very, you know, extensive or it can be a very extensive type of, type of topic. So we could easily have 12 weeks about Python only, okay? But uh, that's not the intention. The intention is for you to be ready to use these, these tools for your upcoming role. So what, what, uh, what I'm assuming in this chapter is that you have a slight, a little bit of knowledge about the syntax, because although we're gonna recap on all the, the, the syntax part, I cannot, you know, we wouldn't have time to have all of this in just one week. So. If you don't have the knowledge, I'll be presenting you, uh, presenting you with free resources out there, and there's many free resources out there for you to have like a head start on the syntax, and then we're gonna cover all of that and introduce you some other things. And we're gonna talk uh, also more specifically about, for example, uh, the OS module, the random module, and uh, the PyQt, PySide uh, type of uh, workflow as well. Okay, so that's week 10. Then on week 11, we're gonna talk about color management, finally, right? And um, 
this is something uh, I'm going to stress this again. This is definitely something that you'll have to to deal with, whether you you like this topic or not. You have to deal with. So because at this point you already have the knowledge from the color science point of view, you'll you'll understanding uh, your understanding about this um, uh, these topics will be much more supported. It will be, you know, you, you know exactly what happened behind the scenes and all of that stuff. So we're going to cover you know, uh, different file types, inputs, outputs, how to, where to put things like file management as well. We're going to talk about how to do um, and suggestions on how to go about neutral grades and CDLs, how to ingest uh, CDLs in specific uh, LUTs uh, for specific shows or specific shots. So that's uh, that has to do with the OCIO config. So we're going to talk about all of that as well. So that will be week 11. And by the way, this topic in here, you, you will be, um, you know in your in your future world you will be more you know you know involved in this type of topic more or less depending on the type of company that uh, you will be working on so if you're in a small company chances are you're going to be actually the one that you know you'll be expected to be the one to go about these things if it's in a bigger company probably not all of, not all of these things but at least you already know if something breaks you know exactly how to go about them okay so week 12 it's the last week before the live chapter I'm going to talk about in a second. And it's going to be only about project management. So we're going to talk about everything, as I, as I just mentioned, everything that has to do with project management from my experience, not only as a compositing supervisor, but also taking all my other experiences from other you know, uh, career paths and, 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 and roles that I had in the past. And that's ac actually what you know, uh, how I have the style that I have today, okay? So it's all the combination. And, and then once again, that's exactly what I want to promote when uh, when you're enrolling a program like this. So we're going to talk about not, uh, we, we, let me take a step back. We're not going to talk about a specific tool. We're not, as I said, we're not going to talk about F-Track or we're not going to talk about uh, Shotgun. What we're going to talk about is how to think about these things, okay? Because the other things are all tools. You can use the, that tool or any other tool. But if you don't know exactly how to go about them, you'll be attached to only the insights that those tools will, will give you. So what we're going to have in here is to find ways, and very, very basic math, uh, I have to say, but find ways to have your own insights, to have your, you'll be the one controlling what you know, when you know it, and all of that stuff, OK? And so this will also be. Um, uh, the, 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 in, in this chapter will also uh, include the quality control, which I believe it's also part of the project management. Um, and so in terms of like the insights and all that stuff, uh, what we're going to cover, because I just mentioned that we're not going to go about like a specific tool, but what we're going to we use instead is a tool that is available anywhere, which is Excel. OK, so some people that work with me, um, they refer many times about my spreadsheets being like this, uh, you know, very, um, you know, enticing thing to have and all that stuff. And I appreciate that comment. But that's just the visual side of things, right? You can do and, and that's one of the, 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 the powers that I believe that uh, Excel has, which is, you know, you can show the data in any way you like or any way you prefer. But all of those things are based in very fundamental concepts, and that's exactly what we will cover in here. The rest is just a cover, you know what I mean? So then extra week is going to be only about soft skills. It's how to have all of these uh, things that we talked about until uh, this week and how to make them your own style, OK? So this will be a fully customized class. And it will be customized not by me, but rather by you, by the entire class. Because I want to hear about your own experiences. I want to hear things that you liked about your supervision, in whatever uh, company that you worked for or companies, things that you didn't like, things that you were like unsure about why this happened this way, things that you feel like are important and didn't happen with you. And I'll be there to be sort of the uh, empire, if you will, uh, to moderate uh, like this type of discussions and to throw you know, some topics to, OK, today we're going to talk about this, and I want to hear your experiences about this topic or that topic. So although I have a few topics in here, these are just examples, because you know what we're going to talk about will be up to you. It's not going to be up to me. So it's every class will be fully customized, OK? So we'll, we're going to have an extra week just for that. And I believe that the end of the program, because of all the things that I've just said, and I'm stressing, you know, very much the point that this will be about your you finding your own style. You, I'm sure you'll feel you'll feel confident to, you know, harness a project from a supervision point of view at the end of the program because you you'll know all the topics 
that from my own experience, I'm talking from my own experience, uh, you have the knowledge on all those topics to go confident for the, this new role. Of course, you know, if it's your own, if it's the first time, you you'll find your own your own uh, your own uh, you know challenges and all that stuff which is fine as long as you have the confidence to okay let me t take a step back and let me see this from a, a you know a point of view that now i have you'll be confident on on taking that role and because of all of these things that we're talking about you'll have also your own style to go about things you do, i don't want you to be like me okay i don't want you to be like your colleague uh, whether it's in the class or outside class i want you to be you with your own experiences, you, with your own things that you you think are great, good, go with them. The things that you don't know or you, you know that are not so great, we need to work on those. But at least you know how to achieve your your own uniqueness, and 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 that I think is very very important because you don't need to be like anybody else. You have to be like your own. Okay. And uh, so, what are the next steps? So today we talked about the the program itself like the units how it's organized what was my thought process behind all of this and uh, then uh soon i would say probably as soon as next week we're gonna have another uh, webinar in which we're gonna lay out all the details that we didn't cover in here uh we're talking about of course uh, prices how to enroll uh payment uh, methods payment plans all of that stuff we're going to cover that and uh, if you already registered at complervfx.com great that's exactly what you need to do if you're not registered yet go there and register there's still time and uh and then you'll receive an email with um from me with the upcoming details on how this will live and where where it will live and with that i take some questions uh, about the this whole thing that I just talked about there. I feel like I talked about for two hours straight. <laughs> that, that was incredible, Pedro. Um, this is so exciting. I, I think um, I'm very jealous of the artists that are at that level to get here. I wish any of us had this amount of training when we were doing it. Uh, <laughs> so this, this is incredible. Thank you. Thank um, you. So I think there is there is a lot of questions, and 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 with obvious reasons, this really is, is a great course, um, and a great idea as well. I think interestingly, one of the thoughts I was having during this is, in these tough times that we're going, people like you, like Josh, that like Hugo, that have come out to really train the the artists to really bring something to the industry, it is a pleasure, and and, and we should all thank you. Um, all of you really for for bringing this to the industry um thank you so saying that that is that is, that is a lot of stuff uh, uh and people asking the first one i uh, probably I'm, I'm gonna ask it uh because it was probably the first question that was asked is um when will the course start do you have uh, we're gonna talk more specifically about that Can you talk about it? uh yes 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 I, i'll i'll answer the question but we're gonna talk about that more specifically on the upcoming webinar. But uh, I thought about running this still this year, but we're gonna have Christmas, we're gonna have, uh, you know, and people are dying to go with families and, and, and to meet families and to have like a, a nice dinner at least or a nice week of Christmas. We all deserve that, right? And uh, so we're gonna start in the very, very beginning of January. That's, that's when we're gonna start because of this reason. Because the last thing that I want, you know that the program is very thorough. We're gonna, we're not gonna rest, okay? Uh, it's gonna be possible for you to work and to do the program at the same time, but the program is very thorough and every week there will be new content. So I don't want, the last thing that I want is for you to, you know, to be jammed in all of these things that, uh, um, you know, you have in Christmas, especially during a pandemic that everybody's dying to have a nice time and have, you know, a nice moment Christmas time with family. So we're gonna start that. Uh, the enrollments will be still this year though. But the the, uh, the, yeah. the 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 start the of the course, the classes will be will be starting in the beginning of January. Awesome, um, cool. So the the next one, I know you kind of mentioned it during the presentation, um, but someone is asking as well about which level do people need to be at for the course. Well, a quick way to, to answer about that is, um, and that's uh, what I've been saying so far, is you, ha you, have to, you have to feel ready to take this position. And by, by saying this, I don't want to say, oh, you have to have three years of experience or you have to have 10 years of experience or you have to have you know, X amount of years of experience because 
you know, experience, it's part of the equation, but there's good experience and bad experience. So experience in a vacuum doesn't mean anything. So what, what I can say about this is you have to have experience um, enough for you to know when to be ready to go about, the, you know, this, this way of thinking this way, because as I just laid out in the program, there's a lot of things that have nothing to do with compositing, like, a lot of things that have nothing to do with making a beautiful picture even better than what you're already doing. It's a different way of doing things. It's, it's doing from a leadership position. So you have to feel ready to go about that 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 type of uh, way of thinking. So with that said, I, I won't, I, I'm not going to say you have to have X amount of years of experience. What I can say is you have to be ready for this type of role. That's And, and also, with that said, I have to say that life experience is also very important. That I that that's that's what I can say. Yeah, cool. Um, and well, it, it, it makes sense. You, you you said it as well on your own experience how the music producer, which I imagine has helped a lot with the management side, um, in, in in your experience than the engineering part with kind of more of the technical bits. Um, so yeah. having the experience from different areas uh, to be able to move up. Yeah, uh, cool. definitely. Um, Another question which I think is interesting is uh, how many hours would you need to allocate uh, per week to complete this course, roughly? That, <laughs> that's a very good question because I didn't do the math yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I would say that, I don't know, uh, it depends all on also the, the week. As you saw, there are weeks uh, that are going to be lighter than other ones. Um, there are weeks in it's just one chapter. Uh, and by just having one chapter, that doesn't mean necessarily speaking that it's lighter in terms of the, the number of hours. Uh, but I would say that between three to five hours a week. But the thing is, it's not so much the amount of time that you're going to be seeing things. What I want you to focus on, because I, I, it's something that I've been saying here from the very beginning, is you have to find your own way. You have to, you know, do more research. What I'm going to show you is different angles in a very, you know, generic way. Again, similar to the to, to the things that we do in Compler um, uh, with the Tech Corner. So what I want you to do is find your own material, okay, and then try on your own. F know the pitfalls about this this way of thinking. Know the benefits. Know where it, it works. Know where it doesn't work. You have this is, I would say, almost a mandatory kind of approach that you have to have while you're you know watching what you're gonna watch. That completely makes sense. Um, cool. Um, so kind of all the bits. Um, actually, I'm gonna ask you a, a weird one, which I didn't see in the course, and I I gotta drop it just to ask. Uh, Blink script. Yeah, no, uh, it's the, there's no Blink, Blink script. Uh, well, the reason why uh, you know we don't go um, for, for something so specific like that is because these type of things, and, and the same happens with the with the scripting part as well. You know, in order for you to become a supervisor and to be ready to become a supervisor, you don't need to be a developer. What you need to have is the knowledge on how to speak with developers to know exactly what's possible and what's not possible. And I mean, if we're gonna do a course about all of these things that, uh, or a program, and I call this a program because it's a program that it's, um, we're gonna cover all these different topics. It's not about just this or about just that. There's, there's, there's um, plenty of opportunities for you to learn just that, but this is more about the program, about the overall thing. If we're gonna talk about all of these things, including Blink Script and go like really deep about, for example, uh, you know, the QT uh, workflow or, or PySide, it will be, of course, just yeah. about this, or otherwise we're gonna be here for a full year, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> cool. Um, so plus, actually, plus, sorry to interrupt, plus I'm not the best person for go about Blink Script, I have to say. <laughs> Ah, so good. It's, that, that, that is that is so that well. It, it is at a specific type of, of yeah. Of, it's yeah. very specific, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Which um, is not the intention about. It's specific in a different way. Yeah. No, it's so good. I, I I just thought that I dropped it just a funny. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, uh, of course. <laughs> so the, the, the 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 other one actually, and and I like this is, um, do you think technical roles transition well into supervision roles? For example, comp and pipeline to these, or do you think they miss the same? Creatify and experience as an artist. Um, that's a very good question, actually, because uh, the way that I can answer that is more the other way around because of personal experience. Because I, I, I worked, uh, as I said, uh, you know, VFX came into my life out of a, almost as an accident. It was not planned. Uh, I didn't grow up with this, uh, within, within this environment, within this, um, you know, world. Um, 
but here we are today <laughs> after all these years right and uh during the years I, I worked in different roles and td was actually one of them i worked as a nuke td as well so what i think a nuke td that only worked as a nuke td lacks is exactly from experience from personal experience again is the understanding of, and on how an artist goes about things the art an artist it's easier for for an artist to know how to go about things that uh, what a nook td should should look at or should be more informed about or you know uh, how a nook td could help me as an artist rather than the other way around i don't think it's as easy because if you're not in the production uh, floor if you don't know exactly uh, how to go about things in a, in a, in reality and only you know go about the tool that knows how to do or or is great at solving this specific problem if you're missing the big picture you might have some trouble uh, on understanding that. that 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 would be the way that i would uh, that i would respond to that yeah. but definitely possible definitely possible i i have really good friends that are soups that have come from the technical side as well yeah. so it's it's all about kind of more the again as you said at the beginning it's more about the mentality of how you're looking at the big picture not yeah, just exactly programming a tool but the whole the whole pipeline it's the whole it's a whole one thing that we cannot forget about i think is you know and and i've said this you know in several occasions during the presentation is when you're a supervisor you're going to do much more than just you know just do the shots in in sometimes in kind of a jo jokingly i say that we don't know we don't um, uh, do any shot but we do them all meaning that you know all the shots inside out you know what they require you know where where people probably will fail and you prepare for that you you have that knowledge from a, an artistic point of view but your role is going to be about solving their problems like or avoiding some problems some pitfalls that you already know that's why you know all the shots you studied them in advance you probably did all the neutral grades for all of them so you know exactly what every every one of them have to to have and um but it's gonna be your role is gonna be about seeing the big, bigger picture about how to tackle things from you know a team point of view like you're at you you're gonna be the head of the team you're not gonna be just one of them you you're gonna be that but you're gonna be much more than that you know what I mean? So whether you're coming from background A, B, or C, that doesn't matter as long as you have this mentality. That's exactly what's required. That makes sense. Um, but uh, oh, I, I had a question. I just lost it because it moved on my list. Uh, <laughs> no way. Um, uh, uh, by the way, yeah. guys, um, sorry to interrupt, Juan. Um, uh, uh, I'm thinking maybe uh, because maybe we're not going to have time to answer all these questions. I'm I'm uh, planning, you know, although we're going to have this other webinar and all that stuff. But uh, for those of you that probably didn't get their answers, uh, their questions answered, I'm going to run a, a Q and A later uh, at um, at our Instagram page. So if you're not there, uh, you can add me, and then uh, you know you can ask me about anything regarding the program, and I'll 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 do my best to answer what I can. At that time, yeah. But I think that that sounds good because there's a few questions. I'm sure you'll you'll answer that. Um, I think well, that's the majority of questions. The other one that I had is uh, that is asking quite a bit is about the amount of people that you think you're going to have per course. If you well, can reveal yeah. that now, or... I can. Uh, so I'm planning to this. This is going to be something that is going to be available worldwide. Okay, so we have to have uh, uh, that that in in, in consideration. I'm thinking about between 30 to 35 people, no more than that. Because, you know, a program like this, you know, requires a different type of attention, um, you know, and if it's like an unlimited number of people or if it's like a, a huge group of people, this will be very messy very quickly. And people probably will not get um, the value out of having a close contact, in this case, with the, with, the, with, the, with the creator of the course, which is me in this case. So, um, it will be more classes. There will be more classes, but each class will be limited to to this number of people. All right. I think that is it. There is a few other questions about pricing, but you said you you'll re, re, uh, reply to those in in, in the next webinar. Um, and I think the the other stuff is again about the levels. Um, and I think that as we have said, it's more about the mentality and the point in that you are in your career to move up. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, because is... let's not forget about that point. Sorry, Juan, to interrupt yeah. once again. But um, you know, people kind of feel fixated in that in that uh, question, and I understand why because they know they 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 want to know whether or not they they they're ready. 
but they are actually the ones to answer that questions. If I don't know them, it's impossible for me to say, yes, you're definitely ready, right? Or you're definitely not ready. So I'm not gonna be the one saying that. What I'm saying, what I'm gonna say, or you know, regarding that question, I already answered, but um, we all have experiences uh, in people that we know that are really experienced in terms of number of years, uh, but um, we know from our own experience that so this person has all these, these years of experience and it turns out like he's not responding in the way that I was expecting because of all these years of experience. So experience, you know, in a vacuum might not mean anything. So, and we also have the experience on the other way around, which is like people that, you know, just came out of college and I, I've met some people like that. They are great at what uh, what they do. They are very curious. They 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 work their way up. They 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 have the you know the thirst of, on knowing more and go about things in a different angle. And uh, I've met fortunately, I've met very uh, good people in that in that category more than the other category actually. <laughs> so you know, years of experience, you know, it's important, but it cannot live in a vacuum. That's basically what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, I completely make sense. Actually, there's th there is one um, that I think is is very important in this, and is um, a, a big part of um, of the comps role has to do with interacting with other departments. Is this topic also contemplated in the program? Well, um, well, the, yes and no. In the sense that uh, yes, especially during the the, the last uh, part of the program, which is all about the uh, you know, soft skills and all that stuff, how to talk with people, uh, to know their, their needs and all that stuff. Uh, we're going to cover that there, but it will be impossible for me to, to know all the angles that every department will go about things. You know what I mean? So, you you know, when you're asking this question, I know who, who was the person who had asked. Uh, uh, to, to... Mao Oliveira. Uh, Mauricio. Yeah. Is yeah. that is that Mauli Fede? Yes, I know Mauricio because it's the one. It was actually one of our <laughs> one of our guests. Um, it feels, by the way, it feels a little bit weird that I'm on the other side now because <laughs> now I'm on your side. Anyway, but uh, Mauricio, what I can tell you, yes, uh, yes, uh, we're gonna we're gonna talk about that. But you, as a compositor, and with all your years years of experience, you will know how to. Uh, you know, what are pro possibly the, the questions that other departments will have for you as a compositor? Because, you know, sometimes you have like your, for example, your CG uh, soup go directly with you as an artist and say, hey, did you get, you know, what we sent you in this way? Is it good for you? Is it bad for you? So you already have that experience if you think about it, you know what I mean? So, you know, yes and no in this case, that, that, that will be my, um, my question because of the reason that I'm just saying it's impossible for me to go about every single angle about every single department and also let's not forget that people from other departments are like us they're different people so people are different people basically <laughs> yeah that, that, that completely makes sense cool I think um that is kind of the questions that are coming I I really want to thank you again I think that that this idea of bringing course for supervision is is amazing I think it's one of those things that um, I, when I did the webinar at the beginning of lockdown with supervisors, um, one of the reasons why I wanted to do that one, it was to show the amount of levels of supervision that exist as well. More and, and more actually. Uh, yeah. And, and how you actually, people think that it's a supervisor and you're just there and no, there is so much more ground even higher than that. So, um, it's kind of all these levels and how, how it is about the relationships, how it is about the information that you have, how do you work with your teams? And so I think it's it's a brilliant, brilliant course. Um, Pedro, again, this is this is very exciting, I think, for, for all Thank of you. them. It is exciting, <laughs> yes, it is exciting. I feel excited about it. <laughs> Hopefully other people will too. <laughs> Actually, uh, while we are on, on the subject, as I just remember, uh, about the question from Mauricio about other departments and whether or not we're gonna learn how to talk with other departments. Uh, well, I answer what I answered, but um, there's a, sp a special type of department that definitely we're going to talk um, uh, in a more equal kind of way, which is production. Because production, we know that, uh, you know, they are always um, asking, uh, are you going to deliver this? Uh, when is this? Wh where is this? When is it going to be done? Uh, you, in production, as a supervisor, sometimes we'll throw things at you that you know for sure, even by your own, you know, by experience, that you, it's not going to be possible. Or on the other way, it's definitely going to be possible. So what we're going to uh, take a look at specifically about production is, yes, you will learn how to 
you know, talked with them by knowing the numbers. If you don't know your numbers, you're just flying blind. You know what I mean? And you have to, what you will learn is what you know, when do you know it? And if it's not possible, what do I need on my end in order for you to make it possible? You know what I mean? So experience, again, it's important. Experience is important to know whether or not it's going to be possible based solely on your experience. But if you don't have the numbers to support, you know, your information, you cannot talk with, especially with production from a, an equal point of view. The same happens, for example, with uh, TDs, right? You, you, you can, you know, you, we're going to learn how not to do specific tools. We're not going to talk about like generic things. It's a very practical. But if you don't going to, if you don't want to go on that path, that's fine. It's your choice. But at least you know how to talk with this with this uh, uh, department as well, because you're going to be the one requesting or doing, if that's the case. But at least requesting some of these tools to be developed, and that's exactly what we're going to talk about. So maybe this is a more complete answer. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think that that actually makes complete sense and actually closes it perfectly, I think. Yeah, um, thank you. Cool. So I think, Pedro, with that, I think we sh should leave it there and kind of obviously oh. all the good luck with the course. Um, really excited about it. I want to hear everything about it later on. Once it starts, I want to hear from people. Sure. Um, and all the best of luck. Thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight. Um, it was brilliant. Again, thank you, Pedro, for this. Thank um, you, everyone. And thank you, Foundry, for making this possible and for all your support from the very beginning also. Very important. And uh, for all my viewers out there, thank you so much, guys. Uh, some some of these people I worked with in the past, some of them I, I just met them because of the, the, the show. So it's been a crazy journey. And uh, <laughs> here we are today, finally. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Stay safe. Bye. Thank you.